What's up guys? Today I got a 2003 Ford Expedition and it's got a 5.4 liter in it and it needs a serpentine belt change. Uh, so we're going to be going over that today. Simple enough job, right? But uh, I want to show you some other tips on doing the job and what to check while you're in there since the belt is off. What you need to really check on these is all the pulleys on. They're very, very common for the bearings to fail on them and start uh, grinding, hissing, uh, a humming noise. And if they get really bad, like I've seen them, the, the pulley starts wobbling. It loses its position and it starts going into the front cover and makes one heck of a noise. And I've seen them go so far, they actually grind through the front cover and then we're changing a front cover on there. So you don't want to do that. While we're in here changing the belt, let's check them and do it right. Now the only real tool you need for this job is a half inch breaker bar and they'll stick right into the front of the tensioner on there and they'll give you the extra uh, leverage on there, extra length and leverage to actually pull that tensioner back and release the belt. Now I'm be using a actual serpentine belt tool uh, just for ease of access in there but it's not necessary. Half inch breaker bar works just fine. You can even use it a half inch ratchet if need be but you better have some muscles to pull back that tensioner on there. Now the actual belt changing procedure on the front end of the engine, the FIAD belt, uh, is actually the exact same procedure for all 4.6 liter and 5.4 liter engines. The pulley arrangement might be a little bit different, but the process is the same. Um, what's not the same is the air intake right here. That might be a little bit different, but the basic idea is get it out of the way. A couple 8 millimeter screws and we can get it up and out of the way and we have full access to that front end belt on there. What you're gonna to wanna to do is unclip your air filter housing here. If you have an air intake temp sensor, you wanna unclip that, get it out of the way. And then we're gonna pull the sight shield off so we can get that eight millimeter clamp on here. And this whole thing will come out of the way and it'll be much, much easier. Now in this particular vehicle, if you do have an 03 Expedition, these bolts on the side here are 11 millimeter. We'll get those out. And then this side just pushes in. Uh, to a little grommet on there. All right, so we get these two screws out of here, put them off to the side, and we can really start getting this area cleared out. You can see it simply comes right off of there. And the clamp on here is a 5 16 or 8 millimeter. You can also use a flathead. So we're gonna loosen the clamp on there. It's gonna be stuck to the throttle body pretty good. Through the, the, the dry, the heat cycles, it actually sticks in there quite a bit. Now there's two hoses for the PCV system on here. There's gonna be push-ins on the side here. So we're gonna wiggle those a little bit and then pull them out. And the same thing, they're gonna be kind of a pain to get out because they're dry rotted in there. It's kind of like stuck from all the heat cycles. Same thing with this one. And then we'll just simply detach the housing here. And then it'll come off the other side. You can simply just leave it off to the side here. No big deal. You don't need to disconnect the mass airflow sensor on these. All right, over here in the passenger side of the engine here, there's the tensioner. This whole thing right here has an arm that sticks down. Well, right about here, it has a hole in it for a half inch breaker bar on there. So you just stick your breaker bar in there and then you pull to the right, which is the driver's side. So we'll pull over and it's gonna be tight. And then you just simply grab the belt anywhere along the way and pull it off of one of the pulleys. And then you can release tension on there and get this out of the way, okay? Wiggle it out of there. And then you just simply get your belt out of there. All right, so once your old belt is off, what you're gonna to wanna to do, especially for all the idler pulleys on here, is to spin them by hand. May put a little pressure down on them, spin them by hand. You shouldn't feel no roughness in there at all. They should be silky, silky smooth. And then of course, when you spin them, they should be nice and quiet too. Just like that, they're spinning smooth. Now the alternator here, this 
is often mistaken as being bad. The bearings inside of the alternator, they may squeak on you when you spin it like this at a lower speed. That is totally normal. And then for your, your coolant pump pulley right here, what you're gonna wanna do is grab the fan, okay? And tug on up and down, up and down, and you're gonna test the bearings inside of here. And then of course you can spin it. You'll know, test the bearings also inside of the water pump itself. But the big thing here is all these idlers on here. You want to really check them and make sure there's no noise or no roughness. They're very common on the 5.4 and 4.6. And they make a humming type noise like a bad power steering pump that is uh, low on fluid. Now, especially right down here, might be able to see it. It's always down here at the very bottom. Uh, below this idler right here is a grooved idler. Those are go bad all the time for some reason. And this one, it was the case on this one also. It was bad on this one. So we changed it out and he bolted it back on. These uh, All these bolts on here are 35 foot-pounds. So now that we're all good and with all the pulleys are changed out, we're ready to put the belt back on. It's a little bit weird to put it in here, but it's all the same for all the 4.6s and the 5.4s on here. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you on camera how to do this, a little few little tips and tricks on here. Um, but I'll put the actual uh, diagram of the, the belt routing in the description down below also. What you're gonna wanna do is take your belt like this and make it nice and flat. It's kinda like that from the, uh, from the packaging. Make it nice and flat, and it's gonna go between the idler right here and the, the tensioner down below. So you wanna do that first, and then you're gonna hook it around the AC compressor, obviously. So you kinda push it down through there, feed it through, okay? Give it enough length, and then you're gonna hook it around fully on the, uh, the AC pulley. And this is gonna be the tightest one to get to. Okay, so we're hooked around down there and we're coming between the idler and the tensioner pulley, okay? And then next thing we're gonna do is go around the crankshaft. That's the next biggest one we have to deal with. It's gonna take the most belt, it's gonna need the most slack to get around it. So we're gonna go around that next. And that should kinda of fall into place. I know you can't see too much, but I'm getting it around the belt first. And just work your hands from both sides of the pulleys here. And keep everything straight as you go along and it'll kind of just sit there. Now we'll come down and around the coolant pump under the groove pulley, which is an idler. You want to go around your power steering pump, obviously. Get it around that. And then at that point, once you're around all those pulleys, okay, you're gonna to wanna to start pulling the slack up. Kind of like this, see this? I'm pulling the slack up so it doesn't flop around. Once you're holding it with all this slack out of it, you got a little bit of tension on your fingers, you're gonna go around to all those pulleys and you're gonna fix them because they're gonna be liable to flop off of there. You want the grooves in the grooves, all matched up. Okay, and the same thing down here we first started. And then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to pull a tension back on the tensioner and we're going to go ahead, make sure this is going on here, right? Should be. We're going to put it over the alternator, like so, okay? You see it's on the alternator there? You probably see it now. Now that's on the alternator, we can go around again, make sure we're good all the way, okay? Then we're gonna take our tensioner and we're gonna pull back fully, okay? And we're gonna push down right here and we're gonna slip it underneath this smooth idler right here. You should be able to see that right there. So I'll try to stay out of frame here so you can see this. 
And the smooth idlers are always the easiest to get it under. So you just pull it enough, keep tension on it, and then you get underneath that smooth idler on there. And before you forget, it's a good idea to get your breaker bar, whatever, out of there. And then we're gonna go around as a post check, and we're gonna check, make sure all the groove pulleys are matched up with the belt. Especially the crankshaft. You can see some of this from down below if you can't reach in there and grab it. It's very important because if you don't, first thing you do upon startup, it's just going to uh, fall off the track and it's going to shred. So once these are all good and we're basically tracking on the uh, smooth pulleys, it'll self-correct once the engine is started. The big thing is the groove pulleys on here. And we look good on here now. Now let's bring you in here real quick as a post check to kind of show you how it should look. Like I said, there'll be a diagram down below also of the belt routing on here. Kind of give you a general sense. All these engines, these five, four and four sixes are almost exactly the same in the belt routing. All right, so obviously the last thing you gotta do is put the air cleaner housing back on, make sure it's all tight and secure, all those hoses get put back in there. And as a, as a post check, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it for about, I don't know, a second or so. A uh, second or two after it fully does start and then shut the engine off and then you can go out with, with a good flashlight and we're going to check the pulley routing all the way around and make sure the belt's tracking properly. Don't want to ruin the new belt. If you follow my tips and do that post check before you even start it, you really shouldn't have an issue. It'll, it'll fall into the grooves and it'll track on the smooth pulleys just fine.